hello friends welcome to creative art craft studio if you like our channel and our videos do hit the like and the subscribe button below today we will be making a vintage wall clock of victorian lady as a design team member of let's get crafting so let's get started with the making of the clock for clock we need a deco page paper I will be using this deco page paper vintage beauty from let's get crafting then the beautiful stencil again from our brand let's get crafting and a clock paste round clock paste further we will we will need knife for texture then we will need texture paste then we need a gesso or you can directly apply chalk paints of any brand there is no specification that you need to use the chalk paint of this brand so now i will just start with the making of the clock i have already fussy cut this vintage lady from this vintage beauty paper to save my time now for the base coat i need a roller and a sponge dauber and white gesso i am taking white gesso on my color palette now with the help of dauber I will apply the colors When I'm applying the color with the dauber, a texture is coming on this block. Then mix water with the gesso or chalk paints because this are to save your wood or MDF from pigmentations caused later on because of the water. So whenever you're using the color or an MDF as a base coat, avoid using water because that may attract fungus later on. If you want to keep this texture, you can keep the texture. I don't want this texture look right now for the cloth that I'm making. So I will just move the roller like this. And just make it a plain base. Then again for the second coat. Just 
apply for the pass first so that the wood is not visible from any ends it's just to see if in anywhere the wood is visible so hence we are doing the second coat not necessary that you need to do the second coat it's totally your choice it's totally your choice then again i will take the roller and move it like this and i am done now i will let it dry once it is dried we will start with the final process so now i have sanded off the base I have already fussy cut this vintage lady. What I will do is I will take a tracing of this lady with my light hands, roughly like this, where I would be placing this. And I am taking the outline like one at least like one centimeter inside the paper. like this it's just a rough figure that i have taken a tracing off now now i will take the stencil and i will place it exactly in the center of the circle because we are making a clock so it should be at the center then i will take the masking tape and i will place the tape at the ends of the stencils so that when i am applying my texture paste it does not move and it allows me to move properly I'm sealing all the corners of my stencil. Making sure it is firm enough that while I am moving my knife, it won't the stencil won't move. Sorry. It's not at the center I feel. So Once you have done the texture, you can't undo anything. Hence, you have to be very careful while apply before you apply the texture paste that your stencil is placed properly. Since you are going to take the image of whole of the stencil, it's not like you won't take hold of it. Now numbers. Right now we won't take. So I'm taking a marking over here as well because. numbers we will trace after sticking the vintage lady over here in the center now i have taken texture paste on my color palette and i will mix it well before i put it on my stencil now i will take the enough of texture paste on my palette knife just see and i will move my knife like this apply texture paste even with texture paste numbers
showing all the areas except number make sure no other area is left now once you are done take off the stencil carefully and we are done so now we are done with the texturing of the clock with the texture piece now we'll take a sandpaper and lightly sand it off so that any uneven area is sanded You can sand it off with the sand block or sand paper and you are good. Once the sanding is done, now I will take white chalk paint and color all over the base once again. Now I am taking off the white chalk paint. You can take any brand white chalk paint white or off white any will do you can even apply the gesso if you don't have the check chalk paint or white color and then with the help of stencil brush i will color all over the base the reason i am using the stencil brush the makeup brush is that that the color will go inside the texture as well properly Then once we are done with coloring the white chalk paint base, we will let it dry for 10-15 minutes and then do the next process. Now I am done with the colouring of the base for now I will let it dry and you can even heat set it with the heat gun or you can let it naturally dry I always prefer to let it dry naturally but when you are working in on order or anything you can always use heat gun and after you are done with the colouring always wash your brush immediately so that the colour does not dry off on the brush otherwise your brush will spoil now once this is completely dried we will take any matte varnish and apply it all over the clock to seal the white base color So now I will apply the varnish all over the base and let it dry again.
don't apply too thick coat and just let it dry for 15 20 minutes again and then we will start with the other process now my varnish is dried off what i will do is i will take spray bottle and i will spray water all over the cloth Now after spraying the water, I will take dark brown color. Again there is no specification that you have to take this color or that color. You can take any dark brown color. I am shaking the bottle properly. And I will take the top paint on my color palette and move the color with the brush with my lighter hands all over it like this I am rolling the stencil brush like this and then once I am done with the applying the color I will again spray water randomly because when I will spray water somewhere dark color will come and somewhere light color will come naturally and I will let this dry naturally center I am applying too much of water because here I want lighter base as I am going to stick vintage lady over here so Now just let this dry naturally. It will take say 10 to 15 minutes or half an hour to dry it off. Now when I see this vintage lady, Victorian lady over here, it does not go that well with this colors. So what I will do is I will take a bit of yellow shade and the ochre shade on my color palette and same way I will color them over here and then spray the water. And I will just move my brush like this mm -hmm. around the edges. And then again, I will just keep it over here and check where the color is going. So I feel this will go properly. So I will just do like this. I am not taking the color again on my brush because I don't want too much of dark color and then again I will just spray the water all over and let it dry naturally. Let it dry. 
since our victorian lady is having maroon color as well so i am just taking a bit of crimson red like maroon shade and applying it somewhere then again with the stencil brush mixing that color to the ends Now this is completely dried. I will take wet wipes, baby wipes. You can take baby wipes of any brand, and I will just roll it like this, and I will take off the extra color from the sides, like this. from the texture Since we are working with the vintage beauty paper, we will try that our background should as well look as as vintage the way a paper is. Now again I will take my paper and I will place and see. Now I will place the paper and I will check. It's going perfect with the background. Now what I will do is I will just take Mod Podge and stick this vintage lady here in the center. Now I will take a soft sponge brush and take mod podge and apply it here at the base you can even apply it on the paper but i prefer to apply it over the base and then stick the paper on the base don't apply too much of glue neither less after applying mod podge let mod podge dry for a minute or so and then stick the paper Now carefully we will stick this vintage lady, Victorian lady here in the center. Make sure no air bubbles are left.
now let this dry completely Now once this is dried, we will again take the mod podge and seal it like this. And now just let it dry. Now this is dried. After this again I will take my clear varnish and I will apply a coat of clear varnish. Before that, I will try merging the edges with the help of paintbrush. Now, one coat of varnish is dried. Now, first I will merge these edges with the base with the help of colors and small paintbrush. So, for that. I will take brown color on my color palette and yellow ochre color and a bit of crimson maroon color. Now, just take this and then with one dry brush, just dab it and mix it. Like this, I will be doing on whole of it. When we do it like this, the outer lines of the paper and the color merges well and then you don't get to know whether you have stuck the paper on the base. It just looks like you have painted the base. Be careful while merging that you don't put the color on the paper. Now again,
now with the help of the bed wipes i will merge this edges applying the color and then just merging it with the help of the wet wipes this way and this side is done similarly I am taking a bit of red color and applying it here as well and then I will take the wet wipes and I will just wipe off the extra colors with the wet wipes leaving a bit of shade Now once we are done with the merging, we will just let this color dry and then we will varnish it and then we will continue pasting our numbers and then the next process. Now I will apply varnish. You can apply any varnish that we, whatever you have with you. Applying a thin layer of varnish, I will apply three coats of varnish to seal my project properly. Because varnish protects our projects from dust and everything, and our color does not fade away when we use proper varnish. Now I will let it dry and I will apply other two coats of varnish once it is dried. By the meantime what I will do is
I will take the numbers and I will do black gesso over them. So now I will keep it on side to let it dry. Now we have numbers as well. So I will take the numbers for this clock. Since it is 12 inch size clock, I will be taking smaller numbers. We have numbers in both the sizes, small as well as big. So I will just take the numbers and I will do black gesso over them. After that I will be doing gold foiling over it. So. I will take a rough paper and I will just keep my numbers over there and I will give it a base coat. Now I will let this dry. Once everything is dried, we will continue with the clock. Now this gesso is dry. I will apply the mix on glue. On this numbers. Because we want to stick gold foil. Don't apply too much of glue. After applying the glue, let the glue dry for a minute or two minutes. After that, we will apply the gold foil. Make sure that the glue is applied everywhere, wherever you want, that the mix on, that the gold foil sticks. This is a sticky glue, so even when the glue dries, the area will be sticky. Hence, the gold foil will stick over there. For applying gold foil, you always majorly need sticky glue. Sticky glue means once the glue is dried but still you can feel the stickiness over it hence it allows you allows the surface to adhere that gold foil over it now the glue is dried off i will take the gold foil very carefully I will stick the gold foil over here and take off the extra You have to be very careful while using gold foil. Make sure all the area is covered with the foil. After that, take your stencil brush 
and just rub your stencil brush like this Now there are few places where the gold foil is not stuck. So what you will do is take the brush, apply the glue over there on those area and then again let it dry and then stick the foil. This is how our gold foiling is done. Now our varnish is done and even our numbers are ready. So what we will do is we will take the scale and take the center. So 11 inches the diameter so we'll just mark at 5.5 same we will do horizontally we check whether the center is right then just place your scale like this apply the glue on the number and stick it If there is extra glue, just wipe it off from the sides and let it dry. Then below that exactly. place number six and then just 
take off the extra glue if there is any from the sides. Place nine over here. Now let this dry and we are if you want any material for the same you can always call us on the given number and you can connect with us on our whatsapp as well as on let's kit crafting whatsapp and get the kit for the same thank you for watching i hope you love the clock